Welcome to Sarah's Homestead and Flower Farm. I am Sarah and this is my little cottage garden in south of Sweden. This is quite a small garden actually. I grow lots and lots of plants and to take care of all the plant materials in all season, I have actually five composts. Five composts, imagine that, I have garden composts. I have compost for my kitchen compost. I also have warm compost. I have a latrine compost because I don't have an indoor toilet. I have an outhouse. Uh, so I take care of the latrine that way. But even though I have five composts, I still have, well, not enough space to turn my garden waste this time of year to new soil. So I actually built myself a while ago a new compost for garden things. So today I would like to show you how the compost looks like a few weeks after I finished it and also talk a bit about how I am going to use it. Look at all the things <laughs> and all of this I have to take care of in some way. I don't want to throw it away, I don't want to drive it to the recycling center. I want to take care of it in this garden and to use it as a no, a resource. Oh, but there are just too many things. <laughs> well, so this is my precious new compost in the garden, built only to take care of uh, the plant material that this garden produces. I love to have this here. I am so pleased with the result. And you know, when I finished uh, the work, I told myself that now, Sarah, you will not put anything in the compost unless you share it with your followers and make a new video. Did I do that? No, of course not, because I love to go out in a you know, pause in my work and to get rid of a few things uh, in the garden and put it in the compost. So it's already nearly full. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. When I now finish my season, I end up with lots and lots of materials that I, I don't really find a use for in my mulched garden. I want to turn it into soil that I can use for new projects or as a layer of mulch on top of my raised beds. So that is one purpose with a compost. But another very important purpose for me is simply to have a place to just put things. Because in this time of year, I want to plant perennials. I want to um, dig down compost from Bokashi. I want to, uh, you know, get some bulbs into the ground, etc. And first of all, I have to cut things down just to move the plant materials to another place. So you know, a very big purpose with the compost for me is just a, a place to put things, right? And this is what I'm going to do with this piece and then turn it into new soil that I can use, of course, in the garden. So I have noticed a few things when talking about compost and that is um, new gardeners don't know how to use a compost. So. I really want to tell you how you use a compost with two boxes. And if you build your own compost, you have to make sure that you have at least two boxes, maybe three boxes, four boxes, but never just one box for your compost. Make sure you have at least two of them. So this compost is actually two boxes with a front that I can remove easily. I make sure that I have quite a big volume in the compost. If I make a small compost, it's um, not as easy for the process to work properly. It will turn into new soil, the waste of course, but it will sure take longer time. A big volume in the compost makes sure that this turns to new soil much quicker. So that I try to, to tell people, go for a big compost, right? And now when I ended up with this lovely compost, it may feel like a very good idea to simply cut things down in the garden and just throw it in the compost. When one box is full, you go for the other one. Don't do that, all right? 
What you do when you have a compost with two boxes is that you fill up one first. Don't be disturbed when it looks like this, when it is nearly full. You just have to keep putting things on top of this because this material will be pressed together and it will fit much much more material in the compost if you keep putting things on top of it. So when you have um, like many thick stems etc um, it might be a good idea to um, to cut it into smaller pieces by hand or by using a machine for example. I have a garden shredder in my garden and by using that I can simply cut old stems, branches etc into this material. This can be used as a mulch in the garden but I can also just put it on top of the compost heap. And the thing is that this type of material will turn and decompose into new soil much faster than this. But of course it takes some time to uh, prepare the material in the garden shredder. So it depends on how much time you have, of course. So I fill up one box with fresh plant materials from the garden. I can do this in, um, you know, now in fall and I keep uh, feeding the compost in winter with things that I have in spring, you know, with the leaves and things that I clear up uh, in the garden before I start to sow and plant, etc. I mean, I use this all year round, really. And when this box is like loaded with stuff, then it's time for next step. And while doing this, fill up this box, this box is absolutely empty. And it might feel like, you know, this one ended up in a wrong place. It might feel like a bad way to use the compost, to leave this space empty for sure. But this is how you should do it. So this is actually how the compost should look like when it is completely new. And this will change later on when you have used the compost for a while. What you actually do is that when the box with fresh material is full, when you cannot fit in anything more, you then turn this heap into the other box. There are a few things that compost need to, you know, keep going with the process. And one of them is air. You need to make sure that the compost is not too, like, compact. So when this box is full, I simply empty it over into the next box. Move around a bit in the compost, of course, when I move it. And I also make sure that air is going to float into the compost and that is what what's needed and when I do that it may be a few months after I started to fill up the compost I can see notice that there is something going on in the in the compost because it is warm when the process works and all the insects and bacteria are working together they heat up the the compost the material in the compost and I can feel the heat, I can see some, you know, smoke <laughs> from the compost and then I know it's working just perfect. So I turn the compost into this box and then I start all over again by filling this first box with new fresh material. And you see, the, it, it's very like airy. <laughs> <laughs> I can fit in so many more things in here. Let's now take the, the things from the garden shredder. This is actually old uh, straw flowers. Lots and lots of them. As you can see, 
there is place for plenty more in this compost makes me so happy. <laughs> if we move back to the very beginning of you know a new compost and how to start it, if you are completely new to you know working with a compost, how do you get started? Uh, as you can see in this box, I have only the ground here in, in the bottom. And that is one thing you should really think about when you you know, find a place for your new compost. Don't try to cover the ground, you know, with gravel or a ground fabric or something to prevent the compost to reach the ground underneath because the compost needs to work with the ground. The compost will not work if it does not have help for like worms and other insects and bacteria, etc. And they all live in the ground. They need to be able to reach the compost in an easy way. So that's the first thing. If you have weeds, like a lawn or something where you put your compost on, you can do as I did here. I put a layer of cardboard in the bottom and that will prevent weeds, etc. from you know, growing up into the compost. So that is a very good thing. On top of this, you simply put your waste. In my case, I have plant materials. I have, um, <laughs> I have so many squashes, <laughs> huge ones. I have uh, smashed vegetables that are not uh, possible for me to eat. I have old fruits. I have, you know, things like that. And I put all of it in this heap in box number one. So that is what I have done. I do not need to put in any extra, you know, super thing from uh, an expensive garden store to make the compost works. It will work only by itself. It's, it's magic. There is actually one thing that you can add to your compost to give it sort of a kickstart though, and that is a piece of an already working compost, the composting process. So maybe you can get a bucket of um, compost from a friend's garden, or if you have your own compost um, somewhere else in, in your own garden, you, you have some compost and you transfer it into this new compost. To, to make it start the process a bit quicker. That works really, really nice. And the most thing in that sort of, you know, compost that you transfer to this one, may be the worms. And in my case, I happened to find, it was kind of a surprise, but I, I lifted a few things in a pile and underneath I found like thousands of worms. So I collected them, they were the red wigglers that thrives in a compost like this. So I collected them and I put them into this box along with plant materials. So now they live in here to start my process a bit smoother. I really want to, to make sure that you get this. You don't have to add things other than, you know, plant materials, your old um, soil from, uh, from pots and containers and sowings that did not succeed, etc. You put all of this into this box number one. And that is how, I mean, how easy it is to get started with a compost. You don't have to have a fancy compost. I mean, this one for me, it looks kind of fancy. I have uh, really ugly composts <laughs> in my two gardens and they work just as fine. But in this little garden where everything I do can be spotted from the road, I wanted to have a nice looking compost. One thing I want to add before I go to collect some more things for my compost is that I do not cover my compost with a lid or something. And that is because, except air, I also need to add some moisture into the compost to make it work. And I could water it, of course, but that's really unnecessary days like this. I prefer to let rain and snow reach into my compost and to give it the moisture it needs. So in springtime, I may put some um, wood on top just to make this um, like table or something for me to, you know, transplant things and, and to work with. But uh, now it's not time for that. Of course, I, I need to have this open space. Look here. 
I am actually kind of happy that I found this nasty slug, right? Uh, I hate them, but I do get many questions about slugs. If I have a compost and I have slugs in the garden too, don't the slugs just thrive in a place like this? Yes, they will. But if not in this compost, they will absolutely go and put their eggs somewhere else in the garden. Don't for a second think that this place will in increase the amount of slugs in the garden. Instead, I actually think that a compost heap is a quite good place where you can fight the slugs in an easy way. It's very easy to put some pellets in here, for example, to kill them. So that's what you can do. And you can also come here to collect the slugs because you will definitely know where to find them, right? Well, friends, I can talk forever about the compost. It's great fun to, to have a compost and to work with the compost as well. So what I do now is simply to fill up this box with things from the garden. And when it's time to turn the compost, I will get back to you with another video and show you how it's done and what it looks like. Thank you all for watching and good luck with your compost project.